This video will serve as our introduction to protein synthesis. As we know, DNA codes for the production of proteins, and DNA resides in the nucleus. However, proteins are made at the ribosomes, which are out in the cytoplasm. So we must get a copy of the code from the nucleus to the ribosomes, and then use it to build proteins. This is going to require the help of RNA. So let's take a closer look at RNA, or ribonucleic acid. RNA is similar to DNA in that it is a nucleic acid made up of nucleotides. However, it's single-stranded instead of double-stranded. But all RNA nucleotides are made of the same three parts. A phosphate group, ribose sugar instead of deoxyribose that we'd find in DNA, and one of four nitrogenous bases, making adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Now uracil is the new one. It takes the place of thiamine. There are no thiamines in RNA. Everywhere we would put a thiamine, we use uracil instead. Now RNA shows up in three different forms. mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. mRNA stands for messenger RNA, and it's linear. It's a strand, and its job is to take the message from the DNA to the ribosome. And then we have tRNA, or transfer RNA sometimes referred to as a cloverleaf shape. We had this simplistic um, molecule drawn here, but oftentimes we'll see it drawn something more realistic like this. But its job is to transfer amino acids uh, to the ribosome for protein construction. And then we have rRNA, or ribosome RNA, and it composes part of the ribosome along with proteins. Now let's investigate how the code works. In a DNA molecule, in the DNA ladder, a sequence of nucleotides spells out a protein, but only one side of the DNA ladder holds that code. So this code is spelling out a protein. Now the code works in units of three. We call these three, a sequence of three DNA nucleotides a DNA triplet. So there's another one. And one DNA triplet is enough information to code for one amino acid. Now let's follow the process with just one of these DNA triplets and see how do we get from this DNA triplet to this amino acid. We're going to take a quick look uh, and run through protein synthesis and kind of an overview and then in later videos we'll look at a closer at the, the details of each step. But the first step of protein synthesis is called transcription and it occurs in the nucleus. And during transcription the DNA is transcribed into a complementary strand of messenger RNA. This DNA triplet is equivalent to an mRNA code or messenger RNA codon of three letters. So one DNA triplet becomes one messenger RNA codon. In the second stage of protein synthesis, translation, which occurs at the ribosome, the messenger RNA is going to be translated into an amino acid with the help of transfer RNA. Transfer RNA with the complementary anticodon, a three letter code that's the complement to the codon of the messenger RNA, will come in and bring with it a very specific amino acid, in this case methionine. So the transfer RNA brings in and lines up its anticodon and carries methionine. So this DNA triplet, TAC, is transcribed into a messenger RNA codon, AUG. And the transfer RNA with the anticodon, UAC, which picks up the specific amino acid methionine, lines up its anticodon with the codon. So that TAC is coding for methionine. So we can go from a DNA triplet to an amino acid with transcription followed by translation. Let's investigate this code a little bit closer. There are 64 different ways to make a three-letter sequence of nucleotides in DNA. There are 64 different DNA triplets, which means there are 64 different mRNA codons and 64 different versions of transfer RNA possible in terms of uh, genetic code. However, there are only 20 different amino acids, and I haven't put them all here, but there are 20 different amino acids. Now, the code is specific, meaning that this sequence, TAC, can only ever code for methionine, and only methionine. It can never code for glycine or valine or serine or leucine or any of the other 20. And there'll be a three-letter DNA code that can only code for leucine. However, just because that one code can only code for leucine, there may be an additional code that also codes for leucine. So while each code is specific to the amino acid codes for, there's some duplication in the code. 
Let's take a look at that in a slightly different way. This is called a codon chart. And it's a very handy tool that we're going to use a lot. So if you don't have one of these in your note packet, um, go to Google and just Google codon chart and print off a copy or have it up on your screen off to the side because we're going to use it. Uh, it's a pretty valuable tool to be able to use. So here's how a codon chart works. In every codon, there's three letters. So you go to the first letter, maybe it's C, uh, and then you go to the second letter, it would be one of these four, and maybe the second letter is U, so we'd be in this uh, column here, and then find the last letter, or maybe it's C, for instance, and then you'd find that uh, C U C is leucine. So that's how you use it. And you can use this chart to decode a piece of messenger RNA, like this one. Using this chart, it's easy to see the duplicity and the specificity in the code. For example, if let's say we looked at the code, I'll just pick one. Um, how about G U G? Let's decode that. So we go to the first letter G, and across to the U column, and then final letter G, and we see valine. So G U G can only ever code for valine. But we can also see that there are one, two, three, three other codes that also code for valine. So G U U and G U C and G U A all code for valine. In fact, the third letter is completely unimportant. So while each code is specific, there's also some duplicity in our code. Okay, so let's decode this piece of messenger RNA over here. So we look at this and we see that the first uh, codon we see is I know it's hard to read this on your screen, so I'll tell you what it says. It's A-U-G. So I go over here and find my first letter A, second letter U, third letter, third letter G, and we find methionine. Now it turns out that methionine is often referred to as the initiation codon, or the start codon, because it's the codon that tells the ribosome where to begin translation. So theoretically, all proteins would have the first amino acid be methionine, although with some later modifications that, that may be altered, but that's the start codon. So then we go to the next codon, and we'll circle it to make it clear, CGU. So I'll find C, go across to G and U, and we find arginine. And we'll continue to the next, a G U and hopefully you're figuring out how to use this codon chart by now. So A G U is serine. And then the next one is A C C, my favorite basketball conference as a Duke Blue Devil. And my Blue Devils beat North Carolina recently, so I'm happy about that. And uh, I look across and I find A C C is therine. So there's my next amino acid. And finally, I get to the codon UGA. And so when I use my codon chart to find UGA, I interestingly find one of three stop codons or termination codons. There are three codons that do not code or do not have a corresponding amino acid. And they tell the ribosome that that's the place to stop the translation. So we're done building our amino acid sequence. So now I have a task for you and you're going to need a codon chart to finish this. But I've given you one half of a DNA ladder here. And what I want you to do is three things. First, I want you to give me the other half of the DNA ladder and put it in this box here. And then use this as the template to build your complementary messenger RNA strand during transcription. And then get uh, your codon chart out and translate this messenger RNA strand that you made into an amino acid sequence. Now, I want you to actually pause the video now, take your time and work through that and then start the video back up again. So you're going to build a DNA strand, use that DNA strand to make your complementary messenger RNA strand, and then a codon chart to translate that messenger RNA strand into amino acid. Go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, hopefully you took the time to do that. Here's what the other DNA uh, ladder would look like, or the other side. Uh, opposite every A is a T, and opposite every C is a G, and we have our three prime and five prime ends. To make it easier to see the triplets, the DNA triplets, draw some lines in there. It makes it easier to kind of read your frames of three. And from this, we'll transcribe into a messenger RNA strand. Hopefully, that's what you've got. And you can pause it and check. And again, to make it easier to see our RNA codons, so we can use our codon chart, draw some lines in between at every three. It makes it a little bit easier to read. And then using your codon chart, hopefully you came up with this sequence, methionine, proline, asparagine, and tyrosine. 
One thing you may have noticed is that if this DNA strand is the complement to this one over here on the left, and this messenger RNA is the complement to this DNA strand, that this messenger RNA strand and the first DNA strand are basically copies of each other, except substituting a uracil everywhere there is a thymine. Now let's look at what happens when we have a mutation. We're going to call these point mutations. And the first one we'll look at is called a base substitution. So if I substitute this base, this guanine, with let's say an adenine, well, that means on my messenger RNA strand, this cytosine will instead be a uracil. Now, this code CCU, which coded for proline, go to your, your uh, codon chart and see what UCU codes for. Pause the video and check that out. Hopefully you find that that changes proline to serine. Now, changing the sequence of amino acids in a protein uh, is important because the sequence of amino acids in a protein determines a protein shape. So if we change the sequence, we change its shape. And if we change its shape, we change its function. So a single point mutation or a base substitution affected one DNA triplet, which affected one RNA codon, which affected one amino acid. Let's look at another one. What if we had a base substitution here? And instead of this A, we had a G, which makes this U a C. So CCU was proline. Let's look at what CCC equals. Look at your codon chart. Hope you'll see that CCC is also proline. Because of the duplication of the code, this base substitution, this point mutation, caused no change in the shape or structure of our amino acid sequence, of our protein. So sometimes a base substitution can have a slight effect, changing serine to proline, or proline to serine, and sometimes it can have no effect. But what if this single base substitution were to change this um, triplet, or this messenger RNA codon, to a stop codon? That could have a drastic effect on the structure and function of this protein. The point is it's hard to predict the severity of a base substitution. It would depend on which base is being substituted. Let's look at a different type of point mutation. Let's look at insertions and deletions. If you understand what happens with one, you understand the other. So I'm just going to look at a base insertion. So what if we inserted a T, added an extra line of code here? So we'll slide that T in there, and you can see what happens to our reading frames. We have to shift because we can only read in frames of three. So we'll shift that. Well, if this is our new uh, DNA, then we have a new piece of RNA and we shift our RNA reading frames and we see that we added this T, so now we've added this A. So using the codon chart, see what would happen to the amino acid sequence we'd get. Now it turns out, and I did this totally by chance, that of course the first one is unchanged and we have our first shift here and we change pro, uh, proline into histidine. But then the next one, because of the shift in the reading frame, put a stop codon in here. Now we would never make these next two amino acids uh, in the chain, but I went ahead and wrote them in just to show you that we would have a change. But in this case, this base substitution, or I'm sorry, base insertion, uh, all base insertions, cause a frame shift. They shift our reading frames and affect every um, codon uh, from that point of insertion down. Now a base deletion would do the exact same thing, but in the opposite direction. It would shift all of our reading frames up. Okay, so there's our introduction to protein synthesis. DNA is transcribed into messenger RNA inside the nucleus. And then the messenger RNA is translated at the ribosome with the help of transfer RNA into the amino acid sequence. Come back soon where you'll find a link here and here for videos on the details on the steps of transcription and translation. You'll want to study those videos closely as we need to know step by step how each of these processes work. Um, but make sure you understand this overview video uh, well before you watch those videos.